Today we are going to, I'm going to do the setup of the, in this case, Spike 9.8 sit on top kayak by Van Hunk. So if you have purchased your Van Hunk, everything is packed decently for protection. So when you start disassembling your plastic, make sure that you use some instrument that you can have control of where you cut. You don't want to cut into something that is um, your chair or some other part of the kayak that is underneath your packaging. So use something like this so that you can have proper control of it and maybe lift the plastic up as you can see when you cut you lift the plastic up and then you cut to make sure you don't damage anything underneath that so yeah good quality packaging and it even has this rubberized extra part for protection at the back and at the front where usually the bumping parts during transport happens and uh, yeah so they really did go out of their way to make sure that your kayak does not get damaged on on the in the process of being transported to you well, Sebastian, congratulations with your kayak. Do you like it? Mm -hmm. Are you excited? Yeah. Awesome. We're going to assemble it now so that people can see exactly what they need to do to put this thing together. Well, but I think it's beautiful, huh? Mm -hmm. So nice. Can't wait to get you on the water with it. Okay, so once you have removed all your plastic, you will basically sit with a beautiful thing. And I'm, I must tell you, I'm so impressed with this color. It's the first time I've had a kayak. It's got this green base color and it really is a beautiful color. It's nice and vibrant and it's nice and low, but all the colors of the Van Anks range is actually quite beautiful. So yeah, once you've received your kayak, you've received, uh, removed your plastic, this is what you're gonna find. Okay, in the back, underneath your straps is firstly, and it, at the moment it's still attached or it must be attached onto your kayak itself, is your rudder system. So I'm just going to open everything up that you can see what we have and then I will start assembling all the different parts. So there it is, your little lock pin and everything. Then your seat also comes in a nice bag. It's always, always nice to keep these bags, you, you know, to use for whatever you want to throw something away in or store something in it or whatever you want to do. But it's don't just destroy the bags. It's not quite often that you have this size bag, especially the one that you um, that you receive the kayak in. You can always do something inside there. And yeah, this thing is so light, it almost weighs nothing. So there is your kayak seat. Um, and then in front, this is your toolbox that is removable that once you uh, purchase yourself a fin drive or a prop drive your prop drive and fin drive fits in here so until you if, until you've taken that very very good positive step of purchasing one of those you can operate with the toolbox which is very handy so it's got a little strap lock here and then you open it up and you've got all the space inside but inside you will find in your manual it will give you all kinds of instructions of how to look after your kayak, how it operates, how to work with your paddle that you also receive with general paddling tips, kayak assembly and so forth which, are we, <coughs> which we are doing now so that helps to have a video to see whatever what you need to do safety precautions, PDF, all that type of stuff that is basic knowledge for anybody that is new and just want to make sure of how to operate these things. And there is your there is your serial number, which is also brought onto the kayak, which we'll find somewhere later. I know it's 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 built into the kayak body itself. But there is your your kayak number, and this is where you can put in all your details for insurance purposes and so forth, your warranty. So also in here is just another little per, uh, promotional pamphlet other Van Nang's products that you can have and then you have in a little plastic bag is your rudder handle that is assembled we will do it later then you get a fishing rod holder with a nice mount that you can mount it on your rails on the side wherever you decide and this thing is what you put on to your uh, pedal but you hardly ever use this thing but if, of course if you go out to do the sea it's always good to make sure you're not going to lose your paddle so this thing can be attached to the paddle or to your boat somewhere all right there is your process card everything's been checked 
everything's done. So for now, we'll just leave this in here. Right, so let's look at the chair first. Use the bungee cord to secure the seats to the kayak. Please note, seats does not float. All right, so keep that in mind. The seats are aluminium, very light, but they will not float. So the bungee cords that they are referring to are these two bungee cords here at the back. They simply click in here. Really easy to operate. So loosen those so that you can put your kayak and your seat in position. All right, so the seat has an adjustable uh, backrest, back support backrest. So what you do is you move it upwards to the position you want and then you just simply tighten your straps here. Now out of experience I know that these straps tend to kind of, you know, they come loose here a little bit and they start moving and every now and again you have to adjust your seat upwards again. That's just the reality of this, how this works. So you can make your own little strap pattern here to make sure that that adjustment every now and again is not necessary. But all those things what you can do is just fold it over like this or tie it down whatever you want to do but maybe one of the lucky ones probably i push a little bit hard in the back of the seat and that's why it tends to move backwards but there it is it's a beautiful seat it's very comfortable once you've put a nice thick pillow here you will find that you can sit for hours and hours without getting tired with the design of the pike you simply remove it pop it in to your different slot and it slides in here at the back and then you take your straps and you hook it in and there it's done little straps that comes in here really easily to put in and to remove later if you need to if you want to remove it so yeah there it is that's the seat very comfortable adjustable back totally secured so i tend to like my kayak seat higher than this and i actually made a modification to lift the seat say about 11 12 centimeters so that you could put something underneath here all right so then we go to the assembly of your rudder at the back so yeah your rudder the drop down uh, cord the drop down cord is attached to your rudder itself now what that does is it yeah will show once it's assembled the rudder the drop down rudder cord goes into this little hole here in the middle and then it goes into the body and it comes out here as you can see you can pull it there so yeah you've been given ample cord for your adjustments here so the assembly of the rudder is extremely extremely simple so all you've got is this is the cords that is already attached to your foot foot controls in front these cords run through here comes to your foot control here in front if you are going to use your foot control to operate your rudder at the back which i don't do because i use the prop drive in front so yeah very simple you've got your cords here just ignore them for now you remove this little lock pin remove the little lock pin you drop it in here and then this lock pin gets attached in there again drop down cord is running through this little hole here and comes out here on the side so what you do is you just pull this and then you can see there once you pull it when you pull it here it lifts the rudder up the back and when you release it when you release it it drops down into the water okay so now you need to adjust the length of your cord that you've got here by using this little ball. And so the function of this little ball is it locks in in that position. So basically what you want is the ball to be in that position like that when your rudder is down. Okay. When your rudder is in the, in the operational position, it's like down in the water like that. Okay. You need to pull your, the rope tight not an extremely tight tight but in the straight position your ball should be in that position so what you do then you make a little knot right here to keep this ball in that position okay you loosen your 
extra cord. As you can see, it's got a lot of extra cord. You can actually use it for something else. Make a knot in your drop down cord and pull it as close to the ball as possible. Very simple. And then you pull it and it lifts it up there at the back. And then what happens is there's a little locking mechanism inside here and it holds onto your cord. And that lifts your rudder up into your position that you want to have it out of the water like that. You release it, simply pull it out and it drops down into that position. Take the ball, pull it and there it locks in position. It is so simple. You do it in a moment's time without thinking much. Now what I do is when I'm in the water, this thing tends to rattle here next to the boat. So all you do is just remember to pop it inside like that. And then your rudder ball is totally out of the way without it banging on the side. Now, if you look at your steering mechanism, okay, there's two sets of cords. Now you need to figure out which set is operating which uh, which which uh, driving mechanism here in front as I said you've got your feet operated once that little action there is more than enough steer the rudder right at the back to the left or to the right depending on which one you push okay so this is for your foot rest you decide where you want it it's in the lock position your foot is resting here and when you steer this is what you do with your foot basically just like that all right so that's your feet steering mechanism so what you see here is you have to find out which of these four cables are related. So the middle two ones are the ones that go to your hand control. The outside ones, they come to go together. The outside ones is a pair and they go for the left foot control and the right foot control. So if I pull this, if I pull the right outside one at the back, you will see that your right foot pedal top the top mechanism is activated and the same goes for the other side pulling on this side the left side is operating okay so now you have to decide which one is the system you are going to use in my case i use the hand control so i'm going to remove this whole thing here because i'm never going to use it anyway so to remove that's very really simple just loosen your wire your line your rope here loosen the line at the back pull this out of the just make sure that you see how this assembly works maybe take a picture one day if you want to put it back in so then you pull this cord out now to remove this you simply push that relief button here the one that adjusts the position of your foot rest and you slide it out and that's it the hand control i think it just makes a lot more sense because when you remove this you've got lots more feet to up a, a space to stand for your feet here and so forth so yeah that is my suggestion to you remove the feet control and use the hand control for your rudder at the back once you've removed these two things look at this beautiful space all around you so i put these things in a safe place somewhere if you want to maybe change your setup one day then you can do that so here at the back see I make a double knot just to make sure it doesn't pull through into the body of the kayak pull it through here okay and then on this side maybe do something like folding it all up in a nice little ball Okay, you could do a better job than me. Uh, do something like that, and then yeah, at the back, then it's open. I think that's actually better to do it that way. But so yeah, that's your two options. Actually, this is a better one. Let's just do this one quickly as well. If I can do this one a bit better than the other side. Something like that. So the way your steering handle works is that as you can see there's a little groove in here. Little groove here and then there's a little metal bar that's over here. So that little metal bar fits in this space here. So once you put it on you'll feel oh hell something's wrong it's not attaching. It's not attacking you know catching. Don't stress about it. What you need to do is put it in, screw it 
tight, not too tight, never do it too tight. Okay, it's not a power competition, just nicely strongly in position. Just like that. And what that does is it pulls that little mechanism up and it lies in the groove. And then you've got your steering mechanism that is activated. Okay, so now you have to determine which wire does what. So you see, if you pull the one, pull it right and it goes to the left, pull it left, goes to the right. So the thing you have to notice is that that is not the neutral position. Neutral position is something like that. Okay, so your maximum distance to that side is there, maximum distance to this side is here. So you have to see where is the middle of it. So it's actually not like that. It's something just about like that. So what, why I say that is because you want to have maximum turn to both sides. Okay. So now you know that is your, that's the position your handle needs to be when it's in the straight center position. And then you have to pull both of these wires into that position. Okay. So now what you do now, push your thread through there, push your thread through there. Okay, now you're going to have to pull this, not as tight as you can, but yeah, it's good that it, it, that it is tight. It, there shouldn't be any play in it. That's important that there's no play in it, because the more the play there is in your, your cords, the more you are going to lose some of your turning capacity. So you want maximum turning capacity. So if you look at that, you see, when you do that, you want to make sure your handle has a maximum effect on where your rudder ends up. So once you've pulled your both your cords left and right to be tight, tight, you will see what the position of that of the handle is over there. Okay. So what you do then is put your body against your rudder to make sure it stays in the middle, and then put your thumb. Put your thumb against the little hole there and then you put it right through again. Put it through the wire, through the hole again, pull it through, loop this thing, loop the cord around the sh the tightly like that. Okay. And give it a couple of knots. All right, that's it. Now it's easier. The second one is easier to make because it's going to lock it in position automatically. So when you pull this tight, your rod is in the middle and your handle is in the position that you determined. And your handle is in the position that you determined is the neutral position, then you know you are winning. So keep it nice and tight. Again, push it through the hole. So then you make your knot, a couple of knots, you can't overdo it because you don't want the tension in the cable to start getting less. So these extra cables, you can just, you know, because I don't want to cut them off unnecessarily. So just get them out of the way here by putting them on this little shaft area well that's what i did i don't know what other people would do they could probably cut it off but i don't think it's wise to cut it off you might need the line for future adjustments if needed just okay, so neatly out of the way and you will find the more you use it, it might be a little tight in the beginning but the more you use it the smoother it will become very really, very really simple whoop whoop to release your rudder at the back, simply pull the ball to the side, drops down, there's your steering mechanism. It already feels a little bit more loose than initially. Actually, this works well because there's not no nothing will hook onto it. That's probably why they designed it like that. So 
this thing is nicely out of the way if a branch or something comes past here it will just flip over it instead of just hooking in there so yeah that is fine you could probably get used to it okay so the last thing you can do which is something that i didn't have on my previous kayak is you can look in your front see yeah, this is your this one is a little bit smaller than the shad this is ample for putting in your jacket or your whatever you want to keep dry in here put it like that perfectly out of the way and by the way what i like about the what i really like about the uh the pike is this molded in handle here this thing is like strong as a beast you will see in the shad the shad's got a different handle it's got a similar one as yet in the back which is also fine because okay here you've got two which is nice and strong but in the front you have only one so that is definitely an upgrade i'm considering an upgrade so what is a huge upgrade for me with the pike is this square hatch you've got right here you so you're basically sitting here then you can put some tupperware bucky or something in here with your draw system and your all your lures and whatever you want can be inside this thing so that is so handy to have where i must tell you this is your scupper plugs now the scupper plugs work if you take it out you'll see there's a hole that runs right through the body through the hole of the kayak see there's my hand there so whatever water flushes in here will just run out there but i find that since this vertical height is so sufficient they've upgraded it quite quite substan substantially that means the water hardly ever comes in here well, but if you're out in the sea you can remove your scupper plugs for me on the lake for bass fishing i don't even think it's necessary to, re to do that okay so this specific scupper plug you will see this one also goes through but there's something at the bottom and what that is this little thing here this is where you mount your um, transducer for your fish finder so that's very handy to have as well so yeah people these little slip mats that comes in the inside really makes the kayak look very nice i must tell you so what you do is you throw them all out you remove your seat okay now you've got all this open spaces here and you will see every little block it's got a different shape now you have to figure out what goes where so obviously the ones with the holes these the ones where these copper plugs are like that some more holes that must be that one this one comes here all right so how this works is sort of its own sticky layer here at the back so you remove your sticky stuffies like that and then always just make sure you know exactly where it should go put it in the model exactly and push it down all right just take note some of these little mats might need a slight adjustment you might find that they don't fit exactly in the gap and this is a very nice little thing to do as well anyway i like doing little things like this you know i'll say so yeah you'll have to adjust it a little bit maybe but that's a minority not all of them just a couple of them i see doesn't fit exactly into the space and yeah i think you will do well to make sure that you cut them in exactly the right size got beautiful that fits man that's so nice so yeah don't complain that you have to do this okay don't let me catch any of you complaining about this because all this is part of your therapy and that's it look at that beautiful now you can stand on here nicely comfortable one foot here one foot there and you can stand and cast your line as i very often do on my shad 
these kayaks are so stable you can honestly with confidence you can stand up straight on them okay just to <clears throat> just to whetten your appetite for a fin or a pedal drive and all you do is that that simple little action there makes these windpump blades yet go like this that might not seem a lot to you but you can't believe how effective it is to to propel you forward and when you want to remove it push those things things in and it comes out like that easily out of your way you put it in slide it in lift these two little handles up and you're done in position so yeah congratulations if you've bought one of these beautiful van hanks kayaks this is the pike that i just showed you how to do your setup and your rudder install and so forth and it's such an exciting thing i think you are going to enjoy every single moment of your fishing if you purchase one of these it's going to change your life believe me i wasn't even into fishing but when this kayak idea of being on the water and close to nature while you are fishing came to me i said yeah well that sounds exciting and since the first time i went out of my kayak i just as i said this is my fourth kayak now and um, you can even purchase these kayaks now in the limpopo locally here in polokwane so if you're interested in one of these please contact me at the number i've supplied on the screen and i will give you a demo and you can have a look at these and maybe we can go out to water and you can have a feel of how it feels to sit on one of these beautiful things so yeah that's it thank you so much if you haven't liked and subscribed please do so and i'll appreciate it so much if you share this video with somebody that might be interested in owning one of these beautiful kayaks again congratulations you can now go out and enjoy best fishing on a van hanks bike kayak